shot his off too. Have I found All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast brought to you by Gun Dog Outdoors. I'm Jeff Stanfield. I'm Andy Shaver. You know, I got to tell you, that leash, that, that, that quick release system that's uh, on the floor right there mm-hmm. is fucking money. Because used to, I'd have to, just the old leash, I had to reel Lou back in to get enough slack to where I could pop it. Now, you just fucking, away he goes. How old is Lou? Lou will be 8, December 10th. I have come to the conclusion you will never have his ass completely trained. Why? Because he's eight years old and you're still having him on a leash that you got to re- quick release him on. Yeah. He gets excited. I know. That's what I'm saying. He's eight. It ain't changing. He's a meat dog. Yeah, that's exactly right. How many more years you can hunt, Lou? Um, if I can get two more out of him, I'll start looking for another dog. Two he's, more. Two more is my plan, and then I'll kind of... Start phasing them out. Poor dog. I think 10 is a good age. Go to the old glue factory after that. My dog's 10. She doesn't hunt much anymore. Well, you drug her to fucking town one time. Well, that was my dad. Okay. (laughs) Speaking of dads, your mom's dating again, right? (laughs) Mm, I don't know. You don't know. Oh, Blake's on here. Blake and Josh are with us on here. Howdy, folks. You told me we could talk about your mom. Hello, world. Hello, world. Hello, world. (laughs) You, You told me we could talk about your mom dating. We well, had two no, choices. I I think she's going on dates, yeah. Well, aren't you happy? Yeah, for her. Um, you should be. Your mom deserves the happiness. She deserves everything. I mean, she had she... to put up with me and grow me and shove me out of her butt. <laughs> <laughs> How much did you weigh whenever you oh, came I would, My sister weighed more than I did. Really? Yeah. If a girl from Taiwan can shoot a dove out of her hoochie, then by God, your mom can shoot Blake <laughs> out of hers. <laughs> I I've missed was, you, Blake. I'm glad that yeah. you're back. I missed you guys. Like I said, it's good to be back. I've missed y'all. I haven't seen you in a while. Yep. Well, I want to give a shout out to Michelle for having her boyfriend. I think that's good. Good job, Michelle. Yeah. He seems like a nice Now, where guy, did they though. meet? I don't know for Black sure. So Blackpeoplemeet.com. I, I think that's what it was. <laughs> Blackpeoplemeet.com yeah. or Catholics Connect? Catholics Connect. <laughs> or so Black People Meet. Do you think your mom's on Tinder? No, God, no! I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> what what would hope? happen? I feel like a dad with a girl. It's like, oh, I know what high school boys are after, but it's my mom. And I'm like, I've been on Tinder. <laughs> what, what if somebody like Mikey swiped right on your mom? Ah, fuck. <laughs> what if they match? Would if be the worst part. The, yeah. Oh boy. First of all, I'd look at mom. And go really? Really? Did you swipe right? <laughs> Why? Because he looks like Ron Jeremy. <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh, Ruthless. You here, think your mom knows who Ron Jeremy is? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, that's her. I'd be They're pretty bad. worried if she did that, I guess. Oh, your mom watched porn back when everybody had uh, pube hair everywhere. Yeah. Back in the day when. That's kind of gross. So, you wouldn't be embarrassed if your mom was dating a younger man like Mikey? No, I don't care the age, just not Mikey. <laughs> so, you don't care if your mom dates a guy that's 21? Mom can do whatever the hell she wants. So, She's if one of Alex's buddies starts dating your mom, you're good with that? Yep. She's a grown-ass woman. She can do what she wants. I think and I, if she's happy, I'm have happy. Have you seen Four Christmases? Yes. It doesn't always work out real well. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I watched that at your house last That's year. It's a great show. Time. It's a great movie. That is a good movie. <laughs> Google me, bitch. <laughs> as long as she continues said, to make... bitch, I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you said you were not going to tell your girlfriend the L word. And it has gotten back that you have, in fact, said the L word. Yes, but it was after July 4th, like you originally bet. I thought you bet it wasn't going to be a year. I thought he said it'd be a year. He said he wasn't going to say it. I'll go back and find the podcast where he said it. Hell, he won't even make it to July 4th. Yeah, it was something along those lines. So when did you you tell her that the first time? (laughs) I don't know. So you actually let your heart go on Andy's bet and said what actually your heart said? You guys, we've been friends longer than I've been dating her, so duh. Hoes before bros. (laughs) Bros before hoes. Yeah, bros before hoes. So Uh, is this, is this, is Blake going to have a wife? Three years. In three years Mm -hmm. to this one. He's got to get his shown built. 
What, what shouse. 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 Shalom. Shalom. Yeah. <laughs> Shabbat shalom, people. It's a uh, shouse, yeah. That's where I want to get married, so. You want to get married in the shouse? Or at it. Throw it at the... At the home place? At the home place, yeah. Oh. So you've already, like, got the plans in motion. Well, yeah. Has she bought Bridal Magazines yet? No. Let me tell you how that all worked. <laughs> when Andy and Jesse got engaged... They got engaged on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning? Christmas Eve. Oh, Christmas no. Eve. There's nothing open on Christmas Eve. <laughs> nothing. Okay. They go to Vernon to have Christmas to her family and tell them that they're going to be getting Andy and their family. I'm sure they were very excited about that. Yeah. They come back at our house Christmas night, and Jesse's got like three fucking magazine, bride magazines. Where'd she get them at on Christmas Eve is what <laughs> I wanted to know. She had them fuckers stashed <laughs> somewhere just waiting. She been it, looking at them. It was a, like... Different ball game. So we got engaged, like Jeff said, on the 24th. She was up there in Vernon on the 25th. We did f- Christmas with her family on, like, the 26th. And they were like, so when's the date? I'm like, I'm just engaged. I don't <laughs> <laughs> That's as far as I've gotten. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about, a date? Like, like to get married? I don't know. Two years from now, maybe? And then we said in, in, in October, 10 months later. Mm. But, yeah, I was like, wait a second. What the fuck are they talking about? A date? A date for what? <laughs> I'm just engaged. We went on a lot of dates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how we got to this point. <laughs> this is a promise to get married one day, not it, tomorrow. It was <sighs> it was quite an eye-opening experience. Like, well, as soon as you get engaged, like, it's the wheels are in motion. So are y'all going to, are, are you going to buy her a ring for Christmas? No. What, are you, no. what are you getting her for Christmas? Well, she doesn't listen to us. No, so she's not going to listen. Remember, yeah, she don't is. listen Blake. for the she next does, thirty she seconds. Does Emily. listen to it. Black, it out. Blake, if you told that story about you getting that yeast infection one time, I would not have her listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're not gonna you don't you don't you're not gonna buy her a ring for Christmas? No, fuck no. You don't think she's expecting that? No, Sh- God she'll be no. down here for Christmas, won't she? Yeah. Well, I'm, th- I'm we engaged to her. Engaged to her down at the. You know what I just thought about? <laughs> what? We're in the state of Texas. Okay. By the state of Texas. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. I can marry y'all. <laughs> no. Why? Right no. here. We could do a live I don't podcast want to be wedding. Yet, Jeff. What are you holding out for? Shouse. The shouse has to get. <laughs> what is, what I is just this want shouse? to enjoy the. It's a, a shop, shop house. house. It's a oh. shop with part living quarter. Very nice. I don't. I don't want to be married yet. What do you hold now? I mean, what, what? What do you want to finish doing single before you get married? I'm not single. I, but what do you use the? I mean, you're holding out for some reason. That shit's no, expensive. I just, I, I, I'm asking. I just don't want him. I mean, there's got to be a reason. Why? I mean, why does there have to be a reason that I won't wait a couple, three years? Well, I would like to know why. And so would she now that she's listening to this. Well, she knows she that knows I want to. I told years. her I just wanted her to be my lifelong girlfriend, but she didn't like that. <laughs> my roommate. Why you got to put a title on it? Like, just be my companion and be my soulmate. Right. Why do we got? Why do we have to put labels on things? Is, uh, is the state of Nebraska, after 10 years, you're considered married pretty much? Uh, I don't know. I haven't looked into it yet. Sure, your mom better hurry up. She's got nine years left. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, she's cool shit, and so I just want to wait. And she seems like a really cool chick. You she might does. want to marry her before she fucking wakes up. Yeah, she won't. You yeah. don't think so? She's no, I gave, cool. I gave her her weekly dose of drugs enough just to. You won't be the first guy that's been down here hunting and goes home and finds uh, some Jerry Curl in the nightstand or some <laughs> shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, it'll happen. It probably it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> shit happens. Life goes on. I knew a guy, and I'm not going to say his name, used to guide. He, he didn't work here as another outfitter, and he told me, he said, man, I just don't know. Every year I go off to Canada and come back home and I lose my girlfriend. Well, quit dating strippers. That's my best <laughs> advice I can give you. Quit dating <laughs> you know, That was the problem right there. I don't think it was the actual one you're dating. It's the quantity of the, where they come from. Well, she she should feel lucky because she got the bachelor, the most eligible bachelor of the town. In Grant. In Grant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what that's what Stoner told me. He said, you're a celebrity there. No, I'm not a celebrity. I'm just Everybody nice to loves people you. And, we, and I'm nice to people and respect them, so... Does everybody like? Oh, no. d- does everybody's eyes light up whenever you walk into the bar? No. The no? bar. <laughs> no. What Not about all. All, what about all the Tinder gals that you used to mess with? Well, how have they taken all this? I mean, don't you did have a girl wanting you to do a porno with her on a Snapchat. How did that work out? I don't know. So I mean, she haven't heard anything. So well, <laughs> didn't sign the contract <laughs> on that one. I mean, you broke the poor girl's heart that was sending you all the mail a couple years ago. 
No, she ghosted me. Something happened there. Uh, like. Well, it's funny. She's married now, so not even a year <laughs> later, and she's already married. So she so found she was him. looking for a husband. She was, yeah, she didn't really care. So what do you Obviously, she just liked me. <laughs> I mean, she sent you a letter every fucking day. Every day. She did. That was weird. To Oklahoma. Oh, that was weird. And the Harrisons thought that was kind of funny themselves. Well, that was kind of funny. Yeah, she ghosted me. That was really weird. <laughs> I've been waiting for a package to get here already for you because the other girl had already sent you two of them by I now. I know. Emily. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Emily needs Step to get it, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, while you're making that package, though, can you put some French toast tornadoes in there for me? <laughs> that would be great. What are French toast tornadoes? Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> They're so good. What are they? <laughs> Greatest thing in the world. They're like a... A breakfast taquito. Yeah. But it's French toast with syrup and stuff. And you sausage. Get it at the gas station? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In and out. Every morning. See, I think they, when I was in Canada, they called those tornadoes. <laughs> so you know did, what he's talking it's about, French. Then? Yeah. Well, turn, tornado. I mean, I didn't have the I didn't have the French toast or whatever, but that's what the tornado was in. Carolina. Every morning before we went out to the cornfield, Stoner's like, "Can I get two French toast tornadoes, please?" And a pack of Marvel Menthol lights. Yep. They were like, ah, "We had to order these cigarettes for you special. I hope you know that." And Menthols. I was like, yeah. Menthol lights. I guess nobody out there smokes anything. I thought women smoke menthols. No. That's a man thing? I'm not trying to call you this out, is, Stoner. I'm just curious. 2020, here. Jeff. Anybody like I guess you're right there. It's 2020. <laughs> We'd be open minded. <laughs> now, if I was asking for Virginia Slims, that'd be a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. Those are women's cigarettes in? Yeah, those are the ones that are fucking. No, okay. Those are Misty's or whatever. What about Newport's? Wrong part of the world. <laughs> what do you mean, wrong part of the world? <laughs> uh, the, not, the demographic is not right for Newports in Grant, Nebraska. Is it is it a Democratic type cigarette? Yes. Okay. Very. So you're saying the coloreds smoke the Newports? Hey, is what you're Jeff, saying? you're saying Gee, I'm a birds, green. Jeff. Is that a bad word? No. When I grew up, that was a normal word. What? It's colored. <laughs> Someone that's not white. Well, that's yeah. It's not very nice. I don't see color. How is that not <laughs> nice? Well, my brother smoked Newports. But is he colored? Uh, Nobody voted for Obama. <laughs> I hell, he might have. <laughs> <laughs> so I did not know that Newport Newports were the um, what would be the world um, the word I'm looking for? Um, what well, black the people BLM's predominantly so? Yes, smoke. yeah. There you go. Yeah. So it's um, a black cigarette. It started back. Shit. I, I thought that was know. marijuana. No. Everybody loves marijuana. Everybody oh. loves marijuana. Hell, I know more. Fucking cracked out white people that smoke that. No, crackheads are black people. Or are they white people? Or are they all people? Everybody can be a crackhead, <laughs> Jeff. Jeez. I know more white crackheads than I do but anybody. But if you notice on, yeah, the, no shit. on the new They port. love meth. Yeah. Whew. That is a white man's drug <laughs> yes, right there. A is. poor white man's drug. Yeah. You've never met a rich guy on meth no. other than Hunter Biden. No, but could you imagine if we all had the mentality of meth heads? No. They just wake up and get meth. <laughs> no matter what their situation, they just get up and get it done. Can like you imagine he, if we were all that way? <laughs> just with anything. Like, they wake up, and they might not have a dollar to their name, but mm -hmm. by the end of the they're day, they're going to get meth. They'll, they'll have, have meth. meth. That's fucking grinder status. Sucking on that glass dick. That's right. <laughs> what did what did Andy Bennett call it? Uh, oh, shit. Chicken, chicken foot. Chicken bone. Yeah. Chicken wing or something like that. I don't know. I do not know of a black meth head. I don't. I'm sure. But I have dealt there. with a bunch of white ones. Yeah, right. right. I'm sure oh, that. I'm sure there are some, but all of mine are white guys. Hey, you have your own? What? White crackheads? I have dealt with a lot of Did those. Did you hear me say all of mine are white? All of, okay, all all of mine are white. All of them that I've, okay, all of them I have seen <laughs> down in the, in the judicial shed. system. <laughs> all my meth heads are yeah. white. All of them I've seen in the judicial system have been white. God. I wonder why that is. Just because uh, I think in, in, the big, in the big cities, I think most of the crackheads are black people, and I think most of the meth heads are white. I think you're probably right. I, th th I think it's but just why is it is it the is it, crack is, it, is a cheap der derivative of cocaine, and meth's just cheap shit that a bunch of white trash meth heads <laughs> that get hold of scramble coke and smack. Yep, that's what the world revolves around in old Baltimore up there for us. Now, is it bad in Grant? What? Any of this shit that we're talking about? Nah. Used to be meth was pretty bad when stuff was getting sold off the farm, but I don't. There's not meth heads around. Is yeah. anybody stealing, like, any of that shit anymore? Yeah, my side-by-side. Side. <laughs> <laughs> Cocksuckers. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, podcast world, if, see, if you see a black and orange Can-Am 
And when you turn the key, it says Poppy. That would be mine. <laughs> and I would like it back. You know whoever got that has tried to sell it to somebody. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Now whoever has it is thinking, who the fuck is this Poppy guy that, that sold this for so cheap? Yeah. Somebody right now is listening to that and saying, oh. Oh, shit. Oh, Bob's got a fucking stolen can of am. Yep. Hey, Dad, you remember that thing yeah. you bought last yeah. year? Oh, damn it. Fucking. So you, did you have it off of, like, on the highway? No. Where was the key at? The In key it? was hidden under the box of the deal. Didn't hit it, hide it very well. Do you think maybe it was the inside like, job? Yeah. It's got to be it's somebody that knew where the key be. was. Or where, because the, the road, where it was stolen, the road, you have to be on that road for a reason. You don't just find yourself you just on steal the Blake's fucking can am. Yeah. That's the reason. I, I mean, know. it's out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. Do you think that Mona Alex's buddies did this? Do you think you can come home one day, it's going to be front yard, and be like, ha, ha, we pulled one over on you. Oh, fuck, I'd be so pissed. You would, would you be? be? I ruined all my pivot roads with my pickup this year because I didn't have a side by side. Why didn't you go get one? I could sixteen thousand dollars. You Jeff. got insurance on one of them. Shit. Did you not have an insured Blake? I did. Well, there you go. You could have got another one. Yeah. But well, he got a new pickup instead. Yeah. yeah. That is a nice pickup. Thank it takes you. pictures from everywhere. I mean, it does. So you're gonna get you another side by side now? No, probably not. I think what I want to buy is like a two door four wheel drive Jeep, and just use that as a side by side. Like an old CJ seven or something. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be sick. Go. But you wouldn't understand. It's a Jeep thing. No, <laughs> Tony, no, w- Tony, Tony would know. <laughs> Tony would. <laughs> uh, salt life. That's just salt make sure you life. got a salt life sticker to put <laughs> yeah. on the back of it. Sixteen-year-old girls and my brother—they know about Jeeps. <laughs> uh, Michelle has a Jeep. I love her Jeep. Well, she has a vagina too, so they're right back the same way. Yeah, but her but Jeep's like Tony that. Too? What? I'm starting to wonder sometimes. <laughs> Wait, have a Jeep or a vagina? <laughs> Well, he sold Jeep, but and you're a fifty year old man with Tony with a Jeep, you're not getting no vagina. <laughs> and and VR goggles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I come the other day and I try to get in the office door and it's locked and I come around and this door's closed and I peek in, the lights are real low, and I just see Tony sitting there like <laughs> playing with his fucking sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and he has his fucking goggles on. I said, Tony, what are you doing? He's like <laughs> Play my game. <laughs> Scared the shit out of him. <laughs> Is that you, Pamela Anderson? <laughs> yeah. This thing is so real yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I can really feel you touching my pee pee. You could have, yeah. you, you know, you could have like scared the shit out of him if you'd like walked up and just fucking like grabbed him real hard. Yeah. I don't think he had uh, earphones in or nothing. Oh. So he wouldn't have been able to, or he would have been able to hear me. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Uh, have you, have you put him on yet, Blake? No. Are you going to? Probably not. Have you put them on? No. You got here. I'm not putting those things on. Why? They're, well, they're covered in semen. What does he do with them? They're covered in semen. Apparently, you can pass out from them. Yeah, I don't know. Never been around them. It's the way of the world. But well, apparently, that's the new way to watch 30 porn. Seconds and I didn't watch porn. I went on a <laughs> roller coaster. But it about made me throw up. No shit. I'm Was serious. it lifelike? It, no, because no, the thing is like animated or some shit. Tony's like into this weird Fred Flintstone bullshit. Mm. There's dinosaurs and shit, but what the, the fuck? actual fucking deal moving you around and shit makes you. Did you do it, Andy? Makes you lightheaded. If you keep your feet like flat on the ground and like hold something with your hands, yeah. it's not that bad. What if you put it on and do that and then take a ride on the side by side? You, I don't know, you might you get know a little how bit fucking sick. crazy that would be. Oh no, I t- I took them off where it says, "Please pull down your zipper." <laughs> Why are you doing this shit no more? Remove your pants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Place hand on cock and yes. balls. <laughs> Make sure you're not in Walmart. <laughs> use, uh, use gentle strokes with each pause. So you, you, it's a brand new world out there. Yeah. <laughs> so you shot your big deer. Yeah. And now you're a deer hunter. You're bow, bow hunter. hunter. So let's get this me. shit. There's get this shit diff- straight. Anybody right. can be a fucking deer hunter. Yeah. It takes a man to be a bow hunter. That's right. Now, Blake, when I think of bow hunters, I think of someone sitting in a tree stand for multiple hours. Right. I don't think of Blake Poppy. Really? No. Well, you're going to have to start. Well, how long did you hunt this last year you shot with a bow? Uh, Two days. Bo- Blake? One day. And how long, Blake? A couple hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's right. That's why I still have a problem. When you go sit on a stand for three straight days all day long to yeah. shoot a deer, then you'll be a deer hunter, a bow hunter. Okay. But spotting and stalking a mule deer is... Kind of, it's more challenging. Josh, let's don't take up for him now. I'm wow. just, I'm talking about Blake's patience. How did this happen? You see the mule deer, 
and then you put a stock on it. Fuck, he called me every 20 minutes. Is that what happened? It's not like you, you had this elaborate plan. Oh, I had a hell of a plan. Yeah. And you, you want me to tell it? Yes. Yeah, please do. Okay, so winter was coming up, so I'm like, I need to get out to my irrigation pivots. Yeah. And I need to winterize them. So I'm out there working on a pivot, and here comes a deer. Man, he beds down in my trees on my on my quarter there. I'm like, hmm, I have a bow. <laughs> so I drove to town, <laughs> bought a bow permit, <laughs> drove back out, and snuck on him about 30 minutes and fired the shot. Double lung him? No. <laughs> so ass, ass ass shooting. No, I shot him. It was weird because the way it cut, it like barely got his lungs, but it like he was bleeding bad. That's when I called Stoner. I have a video of me videoing him bleeding out mm -hmm. at about 40 yards, and I probably, looking back, I probably should just put another arrow in him. <laughs> Where? How far was it like bleeding out in front of like? Yeah, it was 40 yards. Oh, just laid down. It was just standing there looking it? at me. And it's just bleeding. Yeah, yeah you feel can, bad. You can see the blood. Yeah. Did you feel I bad? didn't think I was gonna find him. What are you talking you he about? You said he was right in front of the fucking bleeding air. Out. He was, but he didn't bleed out bad enough to die. It kept going. I'm con I'm fucking confused here. Yeah, I am too. You said you watched him bleed out. Bleed. He was bleeding. Okay. Not bleed out. Bleeding. He was bleeding right yes. in front of you. Yes. And then he runs off? Yes. Okay. How long did you wait before you followed him? Uh, Four hours. Oh, I think it's a good time for him to be dead. Yeah. But he was not. But he was not dead. So what did you end up doing? I had to shoot him again the next day. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that's common. <laughs> yeah, I hear about it all the time. I do. Did you bow hunt? Yeah, I shot a bow, and I'll, I'll go shoot him again tomorrow. <laughs> well, it wasn't too fun. That's very fucking common. <laughs> it was too fun. <laughs> you so put you a bad shot. Twice. Yeah, I had to shoot yeah. twice. So tell us how did That's you... That's fine. Okay, hold on. Where did the first shot hit him? Like... Above his shoulder blade, but not to the spine. High shoulder. High Where's your shoulder. second shot hit him at? Right in the double loom. <laughs> <laughs> so did he roll wide over when you shot him the second time? He ran 30 yards and done. Oh. How close did you get the second time? <laughs> 10 yards. <laughs> he wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> no. He was running across the pivot right towards me. He ran right towards me. I was like, oh. <laughs> Fuck it. Stuck mm. him. It was the most thrilling thing I've ever done. So what are you expecting on your next bow hunt? I'm expecting it to take a lot longer, but I'm going to enjoy the hunt. But, I mean, like, so, like, okay, you're going out Christmas. Yep. Around that time. Yep. Like, are you going to do any pre-scouting, yes. do you think? If I have time, I'm going to. Good. And then you're going to get everything all set out? Yep. You're going just, just ground blind? I'm going to have to, I think, because... The weight limit of the tree stand. Yes. And there's not there's not any big trees here anyway. Right. So I think Andy's calling you a fat ass. No, well, no, no, it's no, true. No, no, no. Uh, I told him last night. I said by this, by we planted some redwoods here for you. <laughs> if I want to, if I want to get in a tree stand, I need to lose some lbs. So next year, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I got something to look forward uh, to. The, the shitty part is a lot of tree stands. The weight limit's only like some of them are two hundred pounds, two hundred twenty-five right. pounds. Fuck, I'm two seventy. Maybe 80. you just put one ass cheek in them, okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What happens when I'm standing on them? Get a double one and you can set a cheek on each side. Oh, I <laughs> There you go. So, like, the, now now that you're a bow hunter, I mean, was it just the thrill of a lifetime? It was it was a lot of fun. Really? I when, enjoyed the hell out of it. When he called me afterwards, he was fucking excited. I was stoked, I was Really? Like, Holy shit, I've never seen Blake this excited about him. I was stoked, dude. And then you had to clean it, and then it, the, all the fun went away. It really wasn't fast. that bad. It wasn't that mm. bad. No. Have you eaten any of the meat? Not yet. See, because we there was a you saw the deer suck at the at yeah. the cemetery, the the uh, they said that so much adrenaline pumped through his veins that the meat wouldn't be any good. So yeah. I wonder how your deer was right. with a fucking arrow. It was aged. It was aged beef before for yeah. a day yeah. for a day and a half. Aged, Andrew. Yeah. So I, I'm just curious. I don't, I don't know anything about it. Like I'm a, I'm assuming and they he had say, a little bit of adrenaline pumping. They say during the rut and stuff when, you know, the bucks are just fucking mad horny men running around that the meat tastes a lot different too. It's not as good. It's gamey, isn't it? Yeah. So Fred Bear, let me ask you this. What's yes. what's next on the list? I'm gonna probably try a to Texas shoot white tail is the next yep. thing on the list. Then I'm gonna shoot a pronghorn next September. We're at Wyoming or in Nebraska. Nebraska. <laughs> and you're gonna stalk this too? Probably. Or you can set up on a water hole. That's easy. That's no, no, no. I want to see him stock one. 
I'll are you gonna, you should do a pig this year. Okay. Oh yeah. I just bought a new bow. You don't you don't have to convince me to shoot it. <laughs> it's nice. It's Tony's got nice. a bunch of raccoons that are coming out every night. <laughs> oh, he's got traps for those. <laughs> yeah, we can trap them and let you shoot them. Mm. How much yes. how much practice have you done with this bow? Literally every chance I get. Really? It's I've that shot, addicting. Oh, I've shot it so much. He's taking Remember it Ted serious. Nugent told us that. What? Remember that Ted said that if you shoot a bow and arrow every day, he said Michael Jackson would still be alive because he wouldn't have had to diddle kids. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he told us. <laughs> he told fuck? us that. Yeah. He said oh. his zen would be better. I don't necessarily remember all I, that. You need to go back and listen to it. That's what I he said. I would, shoot, I would shoot like 10, 15 arrows every day during the summer. Yeah. You do? Mm-hmm. Even, even now? Well, not now, but during the summer and stuff. You, it's just a way of clearing your head or what? Just always know that I'm fucking sharp with it, I guess. Well, with the way ammo sales are right now, we might need them fucking yeah. arrows. Yeah. My, my, well, my very good friends, Nick Riggio, he's like, I didn't take you as a deer hunter. Next thing I know, every chance you get, you're shooting your fucking target. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of shocking to me, too. I love it, man. It's so much fun. Why? Just because you get to turn your brain off for a while or what? No, yeah, it's just it's just fun shooting it. It's two different types of adrenaline, I guess. Like shooting birds. Like, mm-hmm. So say you get, I don't know, a thousand lessers to do it to 10 mm-hmm. yards, mm-hmm. and you just shoot like 20 or 30 out of one, you know, toll. Mm-hmm. But then like a 170 class whitetail comes walking to you and you shoot it at 20 yards. It's two different, you know. I've shot a bow before in the summertime off season, and they're not as hard to shoot as everybody thinks they are. No, which you know they're they're very easy no. to shoot. Once they're sighted in right. and stuff, you just got it. It's all repetition. You're yeah. cerebral, is what you are. So do you think you're that you're an assassin? <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you think you can you you will be uh, removing yourself as a waterfowl guy and become a archery guy? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no fun, does it? No. The best part is the way that the the best part of seasons for both come together. They're about a month and a half apart. Yeah. So you can really shoot both of them well now that we've discussed all of this let's talk about waterfowl hunting you got to break open your season with us with you and zach yes team tommy boy team tommy boy rides again <laughs> a lot of a lot of freaking energy on that deal right yep. there that was a lot of fun zach was politicking to me to hunt with you well good right off the bat and y'all done really good yeah zach was not there today to help you and no. today was a little harder day uh, I don't think it had any deal, anything to do with Zach. What well, do you mean to do with well, Blake? Thank God, he, thank God he wasn't there because he would have been negative Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> Today was a hard day for you. It was tough. But you had 20,000 birds sitting in corn right next to you. Ah, uh, yeah. That didn't help. Yeah, I'm first flock landing there, and I looked at Chris, and I went, oh, fuck, buddy. <laughs> when I was coming back from Haskell, I looked over in the corn, and from the pivot all the way to the cotton down every row, it was just solid geese. I was like, holy shit. You need to put out more decoys, Blake. <laughs> we put out 120 <laughs> dozen. Put out 120 fucking dozen. God almighty. <laughs> that's December a, 2nd. Yeah. That's what me, Bo, and Chris put out the other day. Yeah, Andy was Andy was like, God almighty. How many decoys you put out? Oh, we had 1,000 out. Man. Yeah. That was stupid. I think it added to, what, 1,250 decoys or something like that with the socks and everything in that trailer. It was wild. I set out 40 dozen today, and I felt like I was pretty fucking big. <laughs> He well, shot more than I did, too, maybe, so who maybe, fucking did Maybe it, right? that's the story. Maybe they got too many decoys. It helps if you spread them out how you want and not <clears throat> trust judgment from one of the other fellow workers here on the other guys that are in the group that they can set a decoy spread. Yeah, he's cranked. My guys came up, and they were like, hey, what can we do with these dive bombs? I said, oh, you can go set up the blinds. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you can I'll do. I'll take this. I that's got what this. you can do with the dive bombs. The best yeah. thing for you to do with the dive bombs is not to touch them. As yep. soon as you pull up there and the guys get out and they come walking to you unloading yeah. the trailer, yeah. what do you need help with? I'll oh, just go get the blinds to go help them. Mm-hmm. You know? That way is where I need help. Yep. But I mean, and it's nothing. It's nothing rude, but it's just like so. It's a system. It's there's a system, and right now we've got specs, Canada's, and snows. Well. You know, there's kind of a, a way that everything goes together. Mm-hmm. Snows are on the upwind side, and then I kind of I've got a certain thing that I like to do with my Canadas. Yep. If you just have bags out there willy nilly, it's gonna be all fucked up. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's nothing rude. So whenever I say that, like if 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 you take it the wrong way, I'm not being rude. It's just things have to get done a certain way, and the easiest thing for the clients to do is set up the blind. Mm-hmm. But. He he did. He he was he was meeting me and I had to head him off. He goes, he told not, me not today. He came in the office. He said, Had a great time today. 
really enjoyed Miguel and Andy. He said, Miguel, we like to we fuck with him a lot. And he said, Andy's all about business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to be. And he said, and that's what he said. He said it was great. He said, Andy did like. a great job. He said, Andy was all about. Right. Andy was taking care of business when Mikey was drinking a gallon of sweet tea. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. <laughs> you, that's what I love about running two guides is you can t- yeah. take one guide and say, go show them how to put the blinds up, and I'll start these decoys. Right. I like and usually that. Usually, by the time they're done the blinds, getting all the clients situated, if you got three or four blinds, you got you can get a good. You got seventy five percent of your spread. Oh out. yeah. At and least half. No, Bo's good about getting the grass blind, right? Bo's perfect. Bo, when we step out, Bo is. Bo gets off on brushing blinds. Bo loves br- brushing blinds, and and he'll even. I mean, he'll he'll pull them. He'll get them where you need them to go. Mm-hmm. Bo's great, um, and and Mikey. I mean, and really, Mikey did a good job. The one thing, so it rained a lot, so we're having to shuttle everything in and out. So mm-hmm. I get a little bit of a head start on setting up the decoy spread, just in that little lag time between guys coming out. But, I mean, I don't mind guys helping set out the spread once I've kind of got a pretty good outline. Yeah. But, like. I still. Still. Even like, when you got the outline, it's like. Well. It get, the line gets pushed, and then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you know, you wanted them at, at, you wanted the decoys to stop at 15 or 20 yards. Then all of a right. sudden it's 40. Mm-hmm. Oh, Excuse man, me. that grinds me. I'd just rather do it once and not have to fix everything. Yeah. That's why I do that. I will say today, though, I had the best group of guys that set out socks that I've ever had. Really? All of them were, were popped out all the way. Oh. All of them were about three inches off the ground. Oh. All of them went down like the same. You know, you always have that one that like, sticks it in the opposite and the fucking tail's going straight the up. Mm-hmm. Tails. Didn't have that at all. Around. They listened well. Wow. They did a very, yeah. <clears throat> they were all firemen, I think, too. Or Miguel gave them good direction. Could be Miguel. I think Miguel was Could giving be. them good hand jobs. <laughs> nice with his sweet tea. That's nice. Well, he's a, drinking out of the same glass, same of jug of sweet tea. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, not, it's a two percent milk gallon jug. <laughs> I saw Michelle wash like, it out for disinfect it. No, I hoped he washed no. it out. Let me tell you what happened. He was in the kitchen the other day, and he's like, "You're getting hey. out of your shot too, by the oh. way." He said, "Hey, uh, is there anything I could? Do you have like a thermos or anything around here?" I'm like, "What for? For some sweet tea." I said, well, just take a big old glass. No, no, no. I meant like a big jug of it or something. <laughs> and so Michelle goes, like a milk jug? Yeah, a milk jug. And she's 2% tea. It had about that much milk in it. She went over and washed out and put a couple squirts of dill. She, she gave it to him. He's like, okay. I was like, ooh. Oh, mm. And just fills it up after every. Ugh. He, said, he told me he loved sweet tea. He was so well, excited. A lot of people love sweet tea, but they don't well, fucking drink fungus with it. My thing is. <laughs> <laughs> my thing is. Just buy a fucking a jug, a nice metal mm-hmm. jug that you can beat around. Or like, a thermo. You can buy a damn Yeti. Uh, yeah. Tumble, yeah, big yeah, one. Get one of those 64 like ounce 64 ones. ounce Yetis. Or 128 ounce deals. Okay, now, guys, we're still talking about Mikey. Okay. What? Uh, he's a Nebraska fan, so he's got a thousand dollar pair of waiters. You don't think he can't buy yeah. a Yeti jug? He, he had sick of waiter. His grandpa was a pussy yeah. doctor. Oh. He'll nice. tell you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's your grandpa do? Well, he's not a pussy he's doctor. A pussy <laughs> doctor. Apparently, his mom's a pussy supplier. Uh, no, no toys. The dildos. Oh, yes. Dildos. Yeah. Can't um, blame him for trying. When him and Bo were hunting together that day that it rained, they were so excited. They were talking about the snacks that they were going to bring, <laughs> the gallon jug of sweet tea that they were just going to pass around to one another. <laughs> they were so fucking jazzed up. Set the biggest the Dingleberries. Spread. Team Dingleberry. Team Dingleberry, Team Dingleberry they've Dingleberry. named this. I've got to get hoodies with their names on it, Team yeah. Dingleberry. Jeff told them if they shot 30 birds that he'd have hoodies made up. Team Dingleberry. Um, they did. No, they didn't. They did. But they it was did. a really bad, rainy, <laughs> shitty, crappy day. They sat out in the rain. But they worked their ass off, so I'm going to get them the Team Dingleberry shirts. There was a couple That's lessons cool. learned yes. that day. But they persevered and made it through it. So they get the hoodies. I got to give job, this. I, I, I'm going to give this shout out right now for the whole team that's here. Everybody that's worked here this year. I've enjoyed it. There's not one person here that I don't like. Really? Because I can't say that about every year. There's many people that work right. here that I was like, well, oh, shit. I can handle them, but they're really not. Everybody here I really like. I've enjoyed them. Um, it's a good mixture. Um, Mikey has really, really made it fun because he has given us someone besides Blake to fuck with. Which I love. <laughs> but now that your mom's dating, that opened up that, so yeah, it changed that. Fine. Well, you gave me permission because we can't talk about the other deal. Right. Yeah, but Blake can defer. The convoy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will not be giving out my mom's phone number either. Blake so. knows how to do this. Like, Blake knows how to just laugh at it and leave it at that. Yep. Mikey does not know how to do that. Mikey does not. <laughs> That's what makes him so good. 
Apparently, fuck. Mikey don't know how to say yes or no either. What do you mean? When you guys would ask him questions, he'd be like, "Oh, uh, I don't know." I don't mm-hmm. like. I don't like that answer. Like, you gotta have an opinion. It's, yeah. One way or another. You can't just, sit on the fence. You give me your opinion. Where your crack yeah. out? Maxie, Mikey's easy to talk into stuff too. Oh, oh, I can God. see it. That poor fucking kid. His mom He's is gonna green. kill him. He'll get there. Do you think she's listened to it? She's. I would to, say right? that she probably hasn't because it would. T- could you imagine? Tell listen, Lucille. You need to listen to your son. Why? What did he do? <sighs> Remember 16-inch Tyrone with the double head you sold me? Well, he told everybody well, he that you're selling them. So. <laughs> Actually, he we showed them a, a video. We had a uh, disclaimer between <laughs> Can you doctor imagine? patient. Isn't this some kind of HIPAA yeah. violation yeah. or something? Yeah. <laughs> it's a medical device. It's used to stretch your vagina. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine the people, though, those high school kids at his house? Hey, Mikey's toy. You know everybody knew <laughs> oh, about that the shit. Wor- the still- worst part is in that video that he posted on the podcast page, it's in a fucking, like, 1993 <laughs> Rubbermaid tote. Yes. Just dusty. He posted than a fuck. video of his mom's dildos? He's yeah, swinging yeah, it around. What the fuck? fuck? <laughs> yeah. This kid doesn't care. Like, he does not. <laughs> he was swinging that son He around. fucking grabbed it? But that son bitch was, like, 24 inches long. Yeah, double headed. I told him I said. Why? Why <laughs> double headed? <laughs> so that you can go with the front and the back. Uh, people are into like that, that stuff. Bins. People I buy. Tell you what, this, we are fucked up in this world. No, it's not. It's not so you can bend it and do. But I mean, you probably good. You but could do that I if it was you wanted two, to. Two, no, two I, think, I think Andy's yes, on to something. I think that's what it's for. I never had thought about that. I thought the same thing you did. It was for two women to be. Uh, two in, two WNBA players to be playing sixteen inch Kobe Bryant, but now. I like mine. I, I think I think I that's I what it is. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound very much fun. No, not to me either. <laughs> <laughs> I knew a buddy of mine that got involved in a situation like that with two look, girls, and he said, you look, become more of a spectator than you do as participant. <laughs> Which oh. still doesn't suck. <laughs> we'll get Mikey to Google it later to see what the correct use for a double-headed dodo is. I can Google it right now. Mommy, you can. You, you probably should. I don't, I don't know if you want that on your search history. Listen. <laughs> Some of the shit that's in my search history from some of the <laughs> topics that get brought up here. Listen, you just got to delete that shit. I'll text him right now. I'll call him. Everybody out there goes, what, what is they the keep purpose? saying that? What is the purpose of a double sided dildo? I don't even how, Is that how you would phrase it? I would phrase it like that. You don't want to say double headed. That's awfully vulgar. Siri answers. No, oh, yeah. For my pleasure. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Can I get a. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Literally, just Google uh, what is the purpose of double sided dildo. But I mean, she had a whole tub of this stuff. Really? Yeah. So yeah. she actually does sell. She sold them. Oh, but damn. Used he said to. used to. Used to. Uh-huh. Still has all the merchandise, Uh-oh. but used to sell. Now so he's just trying to <coughs> sell the loose guy. I see. I always <laughs> think of that movie on um, old school when his mo- the, the the gay dude's giving the blowjob. Uh, yeah. Uh, on old school? Yeah. She'd get the blowjob classes. Oh, yeah. And he yeah. comes over and yeah. Will Ferrell gets his ass beat by the boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I always think oh. of. There we go, Andy. <laughs> Andy's got a smile. This is going to be good. <laughs> a double penetration dildo or a double dildo is a sex toy that allows for simultaneous penetration of two bodily orifices at the same time. Whether that be someone else or your own. Evidently so. Orifices. That's a weird we word go. to use for holes. Some of them include a vibrating motor that turns them into double penetra- double penetration vibrators. Nice. You know, I got a nasty message after uh, we did Mikey's podcast. Really? Yep. Guy said, I'm not a square, but good luck with this content. <laughs> <laughs> Does he still listen or did he delete oh, us? Oh, fuck. I don't, I don't really give a shit. I had... About 470 positive comments. Yeah. <laughs> that was the <laughs> only <laughs> my ass off. Yeah. You know, well, I, I tell people all the time, listen, this isn't a podcast to listen to with your kids in the car. Right. This isn't a podcast to listen to with your old square wife. Right. Maybe that's why. Maybe he got yelled at by his wife. You're listening to these cocksuckers again. Uh, well, fuck them. They talked about okay. dildos one time. So, so we're not for everybody. I did. But, you know, but it's funny that uh, our numbers keep growing. <laughs> Uh, Every day, <laughs> we keep getting more and more downloads. So, obviously, someone is listening to our content. Yeah. And that's what I thought. Like, a lot of times, m- that comment might have bothered me. But I'm like, I got so much positive from it. Uh, like, fuck your We're going to have Mikey sorry. on a third time. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sure. We'll probably talk about it again. But yeah. he did. He was like, I'm not square. But <laughs> good Sounds like usually content. that's coming from someone that's square. Yeah. yeah. His wife probably I'm not gay, son. but. 
I'm not gay, but I think you got. I a big think wiener. you have a big wiener, Andy. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to suck it. <laughs> I had that happen. I didn't have that <laughs> thing happen again, but what? I did have just the message come across. Hey, I got a question for you, real quick. And I'm like, Ooh, this is a dangerous game. I am Let's not going to defer. This is a dangerous uh, game. Luckily, they wanted to know about hunting stuff. So. Oh, thank God. Are you sure that wasn't their gateway to later ask you about your penis? They haven't yet. It was two days ago. So if it, if they're going to, then well, fuck the other guy. Waited days in between to yeah. ask you. We had a guy that um yeah you should just message that guy and say do you want to see my penis. Send them, hey, send them a thought picture. about this, hey, sir. Bro, I just, think I'd like I, you to I see my I think I'd dick. like for you to just go ahead and look just at it. Checking in on we, you. We had a, a guy that's an older gentleman that hunts with us all the time, and he was asking me about the podcast, and he goes, I, I told my wife we just need to listen to that. No, I was like, no, we don't. No, 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 no. I go, it's not very politically correct. Oh, we voted for Trump. It's so a whole different, I whole different I kind that. of politically <laughs> correct. I understand that, sir. This ain't something you want to listen to with a garden club at the house, okay? <laughs> Trust me on this. Yes, let's put this over the loudspeaker. <laughs> I've had so many messages from guys that are construction guys that are listening on Bluetooth. Oh, yeah. They'll be working on a house somewhere, <laughs> and there'll be some more shit come on, and then they'll, they'll be like, and then the lady that lived there came home, and I didn't expect her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Like, look, you might have voted for uh, Trump, but I doubt you know what a soggy biscuit is. Yeah. yeah. Or a double penetrating <laughs> dildo. dildo. Orphosis. I learned Orphosis. so much. <sighs> and I have you guys to thank for it. Thank You're you. You're welcome. You've You're learned. Welcome. I've learned. We've made you a star in Nebraska. You know, I'm well, a bitch right now. I used to be now. Catholic, and now it's ever since I met you guys. Oh, yeah, we've taken, we've changed you from being Catholic. I know. Michelle's upset sin. about it. What do you think about y'all's Pope right now? He has no know. clue what you're talking about. I do know what you're talking about. What am I talking about? About the gays. Just the whole fucked up what did system he say? with him. What did he say about he the He said gays? something about the gays. It's okay to be gay. Well, I, I mean, just, do you think he's wrong? No, I don't care. But that's against the Catholic. That's what. That's the whole problem. I get it. I don't, well, yeah, he's changing, what, thousands of years of... <sighs> Nobody likes change. He's for abortion. He is? Yeah. He says that what we do you need think to be more that? liberal minded. I'm not for abortion. I don't care what the Pope says. Like No, I don't either. I think he, I think the, the Pope is the most overrated person in the world. I agree. I really do. And it's nothing against the Catholic right. Church. I don't think anybody should be have that kind of uh power over people that I don't even know how the word that I just I I think the cat I think the Pope is is way too much he gets too much credit for who he is. I agree. Yeah. I think and that. I think the Catholic Church has a real, real, real problem with the uh, child sex offenses, I guess. I don't know the word I'm looking for here. But oh, here we go. To Aaron's going to tell me all about it. Nope. I'm not going to tell you about but, it. You but, don't believe that it's true. But it is true. It, there's a lot of problems with that. But they're the most, they're the wealthiest entity. group of people, entity in the right. world. Yeah. There's no telling how many, and, and, they're gonna see, and it's going to cost all of that wealth to cover up all these Little kids getting diddled by priests. Yeah. I know you didn't get diddled by your preacher. Priest. How do you know that? I know that. Because really? yeah, how do you knew that. Boy? I've seen you look at old weird guys in here different than you would if it was, you know, if your uncle touched you too long or something. Whatever <laughs> Andy Bennett said. But there's a there, there's definitely some issues there, and I just I don't think this Pope is a good guy. I just don't like the guy at Pope all. Pope Francis. I don't think you should judge someone you've never met. Do you? <laughs> well, he should do that same practice, the same thing. Uh, that's then. right. But, but, I, uh, okay. Might get in a little bit of trouble here. I don't care if gays marry. I don't care if gays get married. I'm not marrying them, but, but I'm not marrying right. straight people either. But I guess it's inappropriate for the Pope to say, because he's supposed to be the spiritual leader. Right. Of the Catholic Church, who's pretty much against gay against marriage gays. and yeah. against yeah. abortion. Yeah. So what's the whole world going to just be like, oh, well, fuck that guy. We're not listening to him anymore. Yeah. He don't mind you diddling, little boy. He just wants you to marry him. <laughs> but now if it's okay no, he to marry him, you too. Yeah. What? Now he, he wants you he to. He wants you to marry him. I mean, okay. I'm, never mind. You're right. Well, you can Christ, do both yeah. now. He's for diddling and marrying yeah. him. <laughs> I don't think he's for diddling them. Has he spoke out has against it? he said it? he's not? No, but you can't assume. That's what gets me. How come anybody from high up in the Catholic Church hasn't come out against all this? I do you think? Know. I mean, you're the Catholic here, so we're asking. Are you Catholic, Josh? No. Okay. I don't blame you. Me and, me and Josh are staying way away from the Catholic Church. You can Catholic my balls. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that they're, they're, they're like a lot of churches today, though. You've got the 
the old conservative sect sect of churches, mm -hmm. and then you got these new the new side of the churches that want free, uh, gay marriage and all the yeah yeah. And it's he's the, probably just conforming to what everyone it's, else it's is. It's called this money. Yeah. Because if you push More all money. them apart, yeah. then you're not getting paid for. It. Yeah, that's the same with y'all. Y'all's y'all, church. Yeah, but uh, I mean. You can't be making that much more money if you're gonna if you're gonna piss off half of your congregation to appease five percent of the population. Is half the congregation gonna leave if you don't do that? Oh, but so they, they got fucking mad the other day because uh, they 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 said uh, the preacher said that watching it online is not as good as being in, in person. A lot of old people took umbrage with that and let it be known. They so they think you should be able to watch it online. Or you shouldn't. Well, just because of the whole coronavirus, right. a lot of people are watching it online. Right. Yeah. Preacher got on his soapbox and said, watching it online does not substitute for being in person. You know why he said that? Because the plate's getting a little thin. Yeah. <coughs> Can't pass that plate around. Yeah. And, and he passing around on the... Unless you set you up gonna a little Venmo Venmo or, yeah. And then one of the old ladies, several people said, well, when the congregation... Starts taking other people's health seriously, and starts wearing a mask. I'll come back. Some of them said, "I'll never be back." What church is this from? Uh, Jeff, I can't. I can't give you that information. Rightfully so. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> rightfully so. <laughs> there's, there's confidentiality agreements when you walk in those doors and they close behind you. Yeah. Okay. Um. I, I, I think that churches are hurting financially because sure everybody's in the church. Absolutely, everything is. Yes, kinda. Not corn. We, you yeah. got a new pickup. Yeah, well, that was black beans, but thanks. <laughs> also, uh, the, the one that you almost killed Wanda with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. I didn't. Oh, yeah, did. Grandpa. Yeah, trying to get rid of her, huh? <laughs> if you eat at uh, Wanda died from black beans. Yeah. If you eat at Chipotle or Taco Bell in the next six months, just go be. ahead and message me on Facebook and say thank you. <laughs> I always don't get. I always cut out the black beans. I'm a black bean fan. Why? I don't like them. They're pretty good. Right, so, Try so, harvesting them. So you spray them with something. It's like Agent Orange. It's Paraquat. Same ingredient as Agent Orange. So you're not supposed to eat them afterwards. You have seven days of reentry because it's a contact chemical. So Grandma and Grandpa though maybe. Grandpa and Grandpa through. got in there. Grandpa and Grandma. Gra Grandpa and Wanda. Got in there about four days early. <laughs> started picking some beans for supper. It's like, hey, we're just eating black beans. And my uncle's like, uh, <coughs> you probably shouldn't eat those. And he goes, well, that's why your stomach's hurting. <laughs> oh, no fucking shit. Tell everybody the story about Wanda and you as a wrestler, please, so they because they might not. Have I heard think that I've one. told this story. Yeah, but not everybody goes. Like that's been like two years. So yeah. I don't know. I was. It's been a long time since I got married. My grandpa's wife died in one and. He got remarried. Uh, it was probably five years later. Anyway, we we're walking to a basketball game with my sisters, and we're walking in there, and I just met her. And one was like, "Well, well, Blank, do you, uh, you, do you wrestle?" I'm like, "No, nah, I'm a basketball player." And she's like, "Oh, well, you should wrestle because you're fat." <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucker, I'm seven years old, looking at her like, "Fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, first of all, that don't make no fucking sense. You've seen wrestlers, they're not fat. <laughs> you gotta be in shape to do that shit. Did you tell Michelle about that? Oh, yeah. A whole family What'd knew about say? that story. What they all you, thought it was funny. Mom they all laughed. Oh, they did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fat blade. At first, their mom was pissed, but now we can laugh about it. <laughs> what kind of seven year old woman calls their step grandson fat? <laughs> oh, I, guess I don't Wanda. care. I've been kept called fat my whole life. I don't give a fuck. But <laughs> seventy year old, uh, especially like a seven year old boy. Yeah, you got the first time you met her. Black bean Wanda. That's the first night I met her. <laughs> well, called you fat. fat. Fuck. You should wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice to meet you, Blake. They let you run up and down the court. <laughs> <laughs> How do you make it? <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Sometimes Ooh. I look back at my stories, I'm like, how am I not fucking mentally fucked up? <laughs> well, you're feeding your, your grandmother yeah. black beans with Agent Orange yeah. on them, so I think you're getting her back. I'd say I'd say that was a little bit of retribution <laughs> for what happened. <laughs> God, a couple of days of stomach problems. How old is shit. old black bean Wanda now? Oh, uh, she's high eighties. No shit. Her and grandpa. Are. Yeah. How did they meet? That was before the internet. E Harmony? What? I'm fucked straight up. Really? In 01? Yeah, E-Harmony. Wait, well, it was probably 07. Or did she live in the same area as him? She grew up in Wichita. She lived in Wichita. That's Kansas. a long way. Yeah, that's how they met. E-Harmony. I know, 100%. They got married in a waiting room at the doctor's office. What? 
They're like, are you here for a colonoscopy? Yes, me too. You want to get married? I don't fucking know. Do what? It was in a waiting room at a, at a, at a They at got, a, got married the or they met? That's where they got married. What? At a hospital. Now, hold on. Now. What? <laughs> that's the, they had so a the reverend hospital, there. I guess the church that's the in the chaplain hospital, there the chaplain no yeah. you motherfuckers it was in a waiting room at the fucking hospital why yeah, did they the choose chaplain that had to be there though. they didn't like go there for the wedding they were there and they thought fuck it let's get married and they had a reverend there and, and got married but they had already been dating yes and one like, of them was fixing to get a colonoscopy no that was just <laughs> oh that was for, uh, okay that, that was funny so they that. really didn't get married at the hospital yes they really did but it wasn't for a colonoscopy <laughs> before a colonoscopy so they just had their uh, just a checkup they're Something, at the doctor I don't, i'll have to find out i don't and understand back. how there's so much planning at this doctor's appointment they're like yeah. oh you know what let's get married here and <laughs> let's bring in a fucking must be, gonna be a bad report maybe it was like a three three hour wait i don't fucking know i've never heard anybody get married in a waiting room well i guess that's why they did it black bean wanda yep uh, How long have they been married? I don't know. Does she chew on his ass like all wives do, or is it? Not really. <laughs> they pulled up into the field one day when we were um, cutting those black beans. Rolls down the window. She's like, uh, are you driving the truck for Blake? I said, no, I'm just waiting on him to get back. <laughs> okay. Well, That's a different then, guy. Uh, then uh, his grandfather... Um, Handed me a key to the combine. It was like, "Why'd you give this to Blake for me?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, sure will. Thank you." And they like ride around. They're like taking pictures of videos of him. And uh, what did he tell you? He texts me. He's like, "Uh, yeah, I handed that extra combine key to the man in the pickup." <laughs> <laughs> Just didn't know who it was. Just gave him a random combine <laughs> key. To some he guy texted you. There. Yeah, that's pretty good for he grandpa. He always then. texts because he's like, "I can't hear anything. Just text me." That's good though. Yeah, he's wild. He rolled over a tractor last year. A little utility tractor rolled it over on top of him, and he, he texted me. He's like, hey, can you come help me? The tractor's on top of me. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing he did was text me. Yeah. 911. Nine yeah. <laughs> did you have to get some help? Mm, no, we got it. Was he we got it out from underneath. No, he just had to take his boot off because the tractor it? was on the boot. Was he cussing it? Yeah. <laughs> Truck, I thought I could make it. <laughs> well, fucking obviously what you couldn't, was, Grandpa. What was he getting on your ass about this year? Water in the Water triticale. Water in the triticale. Golly. What? <sighs> so I drilled triticale behind my black bean. You build what? Triticale. What's, What's that? that? It's a mix between, it's a hybrid between wheat and rye. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you. Got I drilled it behind the black beans and I... Where I'm at, you, you're allocated on your water, so you got to be careful about how much you use, so that you don't, you, you know, trying to reserve re reserve our resources. How, how much can you water? Twelve and a half inches a year. Oh, okay. Or just thirty. <laughs> Must be nice. I didn't know we had any. So. <laughs> oh. I didn't know that. Anywho, either. I was, I was like, Grandpa, we kind of pushed over it raising them black beans. He's like, I don't care. We can't have that ground blow. I'm like, okay. So I watered it once. I was like, that'll be good. Like it'll <laughs> something it'll rain something. And he kept staying on my ass. About water. Do you water that triticale? Yes, grandpa. He's like, Well, it didn't make it all the way around. Yes, it did. I have a degree set on my phone so it stops right where it started. <laughs> I don't think so, Blake. Whatever. <laughs> Fucking whatever. So So does he just ride around and check up on what you're doing? Yeah. Or text me all the time and he acts like I don't have anything to do. <laughs> he texts me all the time. He's like, can you come help me pull my flowers out of my garden while I'm picking corn? I'm like, yeah, let me stop, Grandpa. Do you not know what month it is, Grandpa? <laughs> like, you he, did this for a fucking living. He did it to Dad, too. Do you ever tell him no? I just don't text him back. <laughs> Fair. So what did you do about the water? Did you go over your water? No, we right on it. But I like to reserve for the next year. So if you, it's on a five-year deal. So you have 63 and a half inches for five years. So if you only use five and a half one year, you got, I got you, you have more per year in that five year session. So if you hold so off, you can be farming rice that last year if you have four wet years in a row and you don't <laughs> have to worry about it. No, you just keep it. What do you mean? You put it in your bank, your water bank. It just rolls over the next. Yeah, five. It rolls so over it, the next so five the years. Next, okay, so you all right? So you're trying to. You but he doesn't over. understand that. No, nah, I guess not. Well, he probably farmed when there wasn't an allocated amount of water. He didn't farm. He farmed when they didn't have ca cabs on their tractors. So, I would guess so. God, could you imagine? That'd be fucking miserable. Oh, uh, dude. And like harvest and shit, all that shit flying up in the air. When I was a kid, 
dad got this combine and we were cutting wheat and the AC went out. Fuck that. And I was like, Dad, you got to get this fixed. It's too fucking hot in here. <laughs> and my grandpa got on the radio. He's like, get out of there, you pussy. I'll drive it. So my 70-year-old grandpa was sweating his balls off while I was <laughs> standing there. I'm like, sorry, grandpa. But I felt like a dickhead. <laughs> but if, if it fucking closed off and it doesn't have an a- AC... I'd rather not have a cab. I'd rather not have a fucking yeah. cab. What did it, it gets fucking hot. What At least did, uh, some kind of moving air. Yes. Fucking a. What, how old were you when you drove a combine the first time by yourself? Six. Six years old. Yep. I can't imagine Reese Ride driving his combine by himself. Mom's by like, yourself? Yeah. You're full of shit. And you asked Bam Bam, but he, he, he always helped my dad. And Bam Bam goes, his feet don't even touch the floor, Alan. <laughs> my feet are just dangling. So what'd you do? Fucking drove it. You don't need fucking feet pedals on the combine. Yeah. Leave that shit alone. Yeah. Unless That's Ma- the professional combine drove out, driver. Unless Maggie over lays on the clutch, then you got problems. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, what'd you do at the end of the row? You got the hydrostat. That's how you sl- stop and start the combine. Pick up the header. Yeah. Put it back. You don't have foot pedals. Huh. No. You well, didn't know that. Never you been can on sit combine. In, you can sit Indian style if you wanted to. Yeah. Hell. So you don't use the, the Lieutenant ga- Dan the gas the and the fucking bl- thing. No, it's all hydrostat. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't use the gas and the brake. Yeah, there's ain't no gas and brake in it. It's all hydrostat, hydraulic movements with a joystick, basically. And that gets it going faster and slower yep. down. Imagine, slower, imagine a big fighter plane joystick on a stick with hydrostat. And it goes reverse, neutral, forward. That's Learning stuff today, BHP. Yeah. And that's what you would do. Six years old. Yep. Mom would go, Alan, you really think he needs to be doing that? Dad's like, well, duh. It's <laughs> free labor. I, I need, yeah, that's why I had him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How old uh, was Alex whenever he first drove? Oh, uh, he was older because it was always me. He's probably 12. Did your sister ever do it? She did it once. She never that's got it. That's got to make you thing. feel bad. What? Alex, 12 years old when he drives fucking... Well, he's not as fucking good as I am. I understand To this that. day, it wears me the fuck out when he's in the combine the way he does stuff. Why? I'm just anxious, because usually I'm in the combine. I'm <laughs> just anxious. Stoner came out, and he did a great <laughs> job, and I will have him back until he doesn't want to come back. But some stuff, it's just like... It's just, you know, the way I do stuff different. It just bothers me, but it's okay. Just I was that way with Mikey today. Because, <laughs> like the guy was saying... Like Mikey was the fun guide. Yeah, I'm worried that Mikey's gonna have too much fun, and right? He's, and he's gonna offer up too much information. He's, right? gonna, he's gonna break that friend gonna, barrier. Yeah. Yep. Like I heard him talking over there a couple times, and I'm like, "Don't say, don't it. say something stupid." You know the friend barrier. Let's bring that up. That's a really good point. A lot of people that listen to this, they are friends. They come on a hunt, but other there's a lot of other guides that listen to this. Most all the other guides and other outfitters listen to this thing because right. they message me all the time. They know what I'm talking about. There's a fine line between being friends with someone and doing your job as a dad. And it's hard to, some people cannot distinguish the truth. Like you guys sitting right here, I know when you say pit things, you're going to say the right thing. Right. You don't say, Mm -hmm. yeah, we hunted that field two days ago. We didn't have a good hunt at all. So we're hunting again today, you know. (laughs) Because. There's shit you just don't say to people. I got a message today on Instagram for somebody that's coming in and uh, in the next week or two. You know, he's like, how's the hunt? And I was like, well, full moon, it's tough. I said, we're still killing birds, but coming out of it will be all right. I'm like, oh, okay. You think we'll get them? I was like, well, just got to see. I had an email yesterday, and this is no shit. He's a podcast listener. He probably know I'm talking about him. He, at, he His list of questions was a fucking computer screen full. Whew. It took me 15 minutes to reply. And I was yeah, just giving the really. basic answers to everything. And I was like, you know, and it was like one of them deals too. Well, what's the hunt like? Well, it's we're killing birds. It's been a hard year so far. What do you mean hard? You know, it'd been like that kind of because it was a reply just, deal. We have had a tougher season because we haven't had no winter. We've killed birds right. steady all year long. It's not. It's nothing great, but it's, it's just like the last birds. the last week or so. It's been tougher to get those birds that you yes. just killed. Not, it's yes. not. You're not getting done on your specs no. early like we were two weeks no. ago. It's, and, it, and it's a. And you try to explain to them it's full moon. We right. haven't had a lot of winter. You know, whatever it is, but. They still there's there's a line you gotta it, yeah. and you try to be honest with everybody and we are honest about everybody but mm-hmm. there's just some things you don't talk about right and with a new guide like McGill you worry about them giving up too much information that they don't have to give up like there was <laughs> he'd get all nervous and be like uh, uh, I was I was like oh fuck what's he gonna say <laughs> there was somebody there was somebody here God, what was it? it was like two weeks ago and he was standing out and we were grilling or something 
and Mikey was out there, and some guy came up and was like, oh, yeah, how's the afternoon duck hunting? We got such and such, and he was like, oh, it hasn't been worth the shit the last couple of days. And I was like, Mikey, don't <laughs> fucking say anything like that. It could change Wait, day to day. Didn't Jeff shit. just say we're being honest? Well, you can say you. There's a different way of handling it, though. Oh, I, no, man, yeah, it has yeah. fucking sucked. Yeah. We, killed 15, saying, we killed 15 ducks the night before. Well, that's right. not a bad hunt. You know, saying it fucking sucks and it's not worth it is different than saying, "Oh, it's been, you know, it's been tough." That's a lot I'd, like saying, "I'd rather." I think that you should just stay at the at I the Course Mountain and drink beer and watch college that's, football. Yeah. That's goddamn right. Which yeah. is what Blake said. And that went I over did like not say that. Search. That was Zach. Said Zach. That. Zach said, that. "You agreed was. with it." Well, duh. Yeah. He was right. <laughs> Wait, but what you happened? just don't say that. <laughs> we had a hunt in Oklahoma one time, and it was a full, about the same weather pattern we have yeah, now. Hot, and we had hot, morning hot. geese, but we didn't have a lot of field ducks. We had some places with some yeah. ducks. And the guy told me after they decided they weren't going to duck hunt that night, which I was fine with that. And then the guy told me, well, we come all the way from southern Louisiana to come up here and duck hunt. We don't need a guide telling us we'd be better off sitting in a hotel watch college football. We'd rather hunt and not shoot nothing and do that. <laughs> I was like, well, what are you talking about? I we'll found out later that fucking Team Dumbass over there had told Tell me boy. that. <laughs> they told him that they'd just be better off to stay at the hotel. And they were. Yeah. Obviously not. Yeah. Didn't work uh, out real well for Jeff. That's a little too honest there. Yeah. I didn't say it. I just agreed. <laughs> <laughs> he was just nodding in the but, background. But, you know, yeah. I tell everybody. Preach. <laughs> Preach it, brother. Every, I, I feel you. Everybody that comes to the office, I tell everybody the truth. When they call me, I'm not going to yeah. lie. I don't lie to nobody about it. You're going to fucking find out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't have yeah. nothing to lie to you about. I might say, you know, it's tough. And if it has been tough. Mm-hmm. Like today, Blake had a hard hunt and he had a really good hunt. You know? If you call and ask me Which how it is. Which has nothing to do with experience no, level. No, no, that, that's Most not, of I'm it not, has a lot to do with how the decoy spread was set out. Yeah, which goes directly back to experience. Mm. But <laughs> we, uh, made up. But if you called and you asked me how was the hunting today, I'm going to tell you <coughs> the truth. We had one group that didn't that struggled and we had one that had a really good hunt. Yeah. But it's a full moon deal and that's got a lot to do with it. Now the moon's going away and as it gets darker, we're going to be better. I'll yeah. tell you what, if anybody messages me and asks how the hunting is, I'm going to say, listen, as long as you're with me, you're in the clear. Clear, clear of what? Shooting. Shooting yep. lots. <laughs> Watching the birds fly by. <laughs> are you into bird watching? Because <laughs> if you are, you're in the I'm, clear. I'm your hey, dad. <laughs> turn my mic off so I can fix this fucking thing. So are we close, Blake, to, to, to knowing? Are we, are we going to get to meet Emily? Is she going to be here? Yeah, she's coming the 22nd through the 27th. So we could do a podcast with her and your brother. And, that ought to be really and interesting. And me. No, we no, can no, have no, a no, poppy no. family. Your what? brother's coming also? Yeah. I Christmas. Didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. So is he going to stay here for Christmas or just? Yeah, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, and Jesus 1, 2, 3, Christ. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What the fuck are you saying? I don't know. The motherfucker's so bent on fucking hunting and doing shit that's not going to college. That he <laughs> He's going to HVAC school, isn't he? You're going to be Why Oklahoma. do you think that's a northern and thing? And you're going to Oklahoma. Huh? Why do you think that's a northern thing? I don't think that's a northern thing. That's what you he's and doing. Told isn't it? Me, no, no, he's going to school to be an agronomist. Ag production. Where the fuck did we get HVAC? You I and have Zach no always idea. say, "What's up with all you northern fucks going to college to go to HVAC?" I've never said that. No, I've never heard anybody say either. <sighs> okay, I don't know. So, anyways, you're going to be in Oklahoma hunting at that time. Jeff, we talked about this last night. You said you'd send Austin. I said we'd see what was happening. They asked to hunt with you. He's just being a dick again. He just is. like you getting all those hoodies here. I'm not being a dick about that. No, Listen. you're being a, you're being an ass about it. How am I being an ass? Because we've got all this room here. There's and a like, fucking sea container outside with like. Oh, if you uh, want to put them back there, that's it's fine. got room for five boxes of yes. hoodies that are coming. Yeah. yeah. Blake sold a hundred. If he ships ten a day, he's done in ten days. Okay. First of all, Josh. But how, a, hold on. <laughs> they probably want it for Christmas, so you're gonna need to like bump okay. those. Josh, hold, hold on. Hold Fif- on. Fifteen a day. Stone. Twenty, 20 or twenty five. So. <laughs> Do you think Blake is gonna send ten per day? Yes. No, he's got to send 25 because it's got to get back into do you think Blake is going to send 10 per day religiously? I'm going to say no, he's not because I know Blake too well. I bet he does. I love you, Blake. It's not happening. Okay. Andy. Now. I think you're going to oversell. I think you're going to go 25 a day. <laughs> Thank you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I've been selling, selling or sending shit and shit gets sent back and I got stuff that don't get there that's horrible right now. And I know how much of a pain in the ass it is. So I can't wait to watch you package up. 10 hoodies a day, do a label for them, fill out a label, take them to the post office and send them. I think you need to just make them come pick them up from you. you How? Agree. 
He oh, sold yeah. them all over the country. Poor, poor Johnny Appleseed in fucking Vermont's going to drive yeah. and pick up a hoodie from Blake. Well, Johnny, you get to see a lot of pretty parts of the world on the way down. Of, about to see half the country and get a hunt with us. Yeah. So well, that's if, the thing. I, I'll give you guys a deal that bought some hoodies. If if you come pick up your hoodie, I will let Jeff sell you a price of a, a hunt at, at full price. <laughs> Thank you. I told Blake, my advice to Blake was on these shirts is ship them to your mother. Have her go through her shop Jeff, and pay the lady. So what he, about the lady that works for? Her? <laughs> she ain't gonna like it either. They got shit to do at their own store. Okay, and we got shit to if, do here at the if, Big Honker if Lodge. If five boxes of hoodies show up to the store and go, oh yeah, mom, by the way, can you mail those out for me? She'll be like, fuck you, you fucking idiot. <laughs> well, you gotta think what She's ten, ten or fifteen are gonna stay here at the lodge. Okay, now so you're down to just eighty-five to send. Right. Right. You got to figure out how many people are coming hunting this year that ordered a hoodie. So maybe that'll drop to 70. Okay. Right. So you only got 70 hoodies to right. do. Doable. So you can do seven a day for 10 days if you wanted to. But it won't get there in time for the holidays. That's fine. Why do they need That's a Poppy Farms December hoodie for what if it's a hot? What if it's a stocking stuffer? Ain't no fucking way it's a stocking stuffer. I like, saw some of the you're sizes. You're a hot commodity. <laughs> it's a big fucking stocking. It's a big fucking stocking <laughs> stuffer. <laughs> When are you going to get your bags? There's some beefy in? people here. I don't know, Jeff. I'll figure it the fuck I'm out. I'm trying I to help you. Do. I've been for three months when you first told me this. I sent you a message. I said, Blake, trust me. You do not know what you're getting into. <laughs> you did and, say and, that. And you go, you're probably right. And then I seen you post it again. Go, what the fuck are you thinking? Mm. I don't know. Is it that bad? I said, mm. I guess I'm finding out. Hey. I said, what you need to do is find out if there's a place that will do that for you, and there might be. Right. That's you could probably take done. it to the UPS store or something. Yeah, go to the one right there by Allsup's in Knox City. You gotta go to Abilene or Wichita. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. You can take every one of them and have. But Literally, they, but you gotta bag the them all. You give them a label them. sheet, Fuck it. or not a label sheet, but just a list of the addresses right. it has to go to, and they can probably yeah. individually. I'm not gonna bring this up anymore, but I'm gonna say right now. I told you so, and I won't say it again. Because okay. when this is all said and done, Blake's gonna walk in my office and say, "Fuck, Jeff, you were right." <laughs> hey, well, it's no shit. What are the ones that you got us? Carhartt ones. Fuck yeah. Now, when you say us. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Who who is who is all in us? Jeff, Tony, Andy, Zach, Stoner, and I. Okay. And then I'll sell the others to other people. But I bought you guys some. I appreciate it. Happy birthday. Thank you. And Christmas, I'll use it Christmas. as a stocking stuffer. Happy birthday, Jesus. <laughs> I'll use it as a stocking stuffer. Ah, uh, what a deal. You know, what Blake said my harvest bonus was what? Give my windows tenant. Really? Mm-hmm. He left too soon, but I'll get him yeah. done. It's pretty fair trade. You you sure treat all your employees really good. He, he was from the great guy to that work for. Drives your grain to town, from stoner to your brother. You get lots of special treats for everybody, yes. don't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Some give special treats more yep. than others. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no blowjobs for you guys, though. This is where Blake's getting. Oh, can we talk about that? Giving blowjobs to my employees? <laughs> can we bring this up? No. <laughs> Defer, you, Blake. You for the have record, to, you have to just keep fucking your, smile. For the record, I did not suck any dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> I did. You got to treat your employees right, Jeff. Otherwise, it won't come back. Well, if Tony wants to take to care of you guys and go I right work stoner to the boner. <laughs> what were the hours like? I was stoner. Uh, about 6, 6.30 a.m. to about 7.30, 8.30 p.m. They make lunch for y'all every day? No, we only eat about lunch or dinner time. We had some lunch, though. Oh, yeah, every now and then. You mean Emily lunch. didn't bring you all lunch? Sometimes. Emily brought us lunch once. Deeb's brought us lunch once. Yeah, the seed guy. What about the Deedus Christ guy? <laughs> he farms more than I do. Does he? he ain't bringing Fuck me fucking... Robert? Shit. <laughs> Talk like Robert real quick. No, I can't. Why, yeah, you do. You no. Do. You do a good job of Robert. Why? <laughs> Cause I like what it. if he listens to this? So you Robert ain't listening I'm to no damn podcast. <laughs> he has hell with Facebook. Wayne Elevator. Home. <laughs> so you start oh. at six six thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Work through lunch, yep. and you eat dinner at what time? Eight thirty nine o'clock at night. Yeah. yeah. Motherfucker. T- t- Listen, see, you, know, you guys thought we were dicking off the whole time. If you want to unionize, we can get some fucking cigarette we breaks. We need to talk about this. We can no, get some cigarette breaks. I, there was times that I could pick corn at the same time, and the rows were flat and straight enough. I could stand on the fucking side as it was picking and smoke my cigarette. Right. Those menthols are Newport's, right? But, but what <laughs> about, <laughs> like, lights. he needs a sandwich to pick him up. Like, at least a peanut and butter And I bought sandwich. him a lot of lunches. Yeah. One time I took him brisket sandwiches. Yeah. 
They were good. Hey, they were fucking good. Tell, tell Robert's snake story on Facebook. <laughs> snake story. You remember what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell it. Oh, uh, shit. So, oh, uh, shit. Dad was still alive. So, probably five years ago. Robert's like, we're all standing around the pickup in his yard. And he's like, did you hear Dan Bishop had a snake in her yard or in her garage? Yes, I heard about it. And he's like, yeah, then I went out to the fucking co-op. And he, he said, you got a snake up in the neighborhood? I said, yeah, how'd you hear about it? And he said, Facebook guy go, Jesus Christ. And we were laughing. He looks at me and goes, how far did that Facebook go? Jesus <laughs> 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 He's got a lot of stories like that. It's <laughs> how far does that Facebook go? I know. <laughs> Just one of them old farmers that that's all he's done. He's farmed and he enjoys it and he's a good dude. He guys does a like lot that, for me. I appreciate guys him. like that are fun to be around. Yeah. And you respect and appreciate them because we oh. don't have enough of them like that anymore. And the advice and shit he gives me, it helps me on my yeah. farm, so but it's he's got some funny <laughs> stories about that. One time they were him and dad were putting a motor in the tractor and dad's running the forklift and Robert's trying to guide it in there and <laughs> And Robert goes, raise her down, raise her down. <laughs> <laughs> and Dad looks at me and goes, which way do I go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, raise her down, raise her down. <laughs> yeah, good Those shit. guys, I mean, it's just, when that generation of farmers leave this earth, like oh. there's going to be so much knowledge that goes with them. Oh, yeah. Because there's oh, just so yeah. much technology, and I'm not putting you down in any way, but there's just so much technology now. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, I mean, you can get it to where the seed is is planted in mm -hmm. almost the same place. And you place know exactly every year. what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know if you're spilling, you know if it's mm -hmm. not, you know if something's clogged. There's just going to be so much knowledge when that generation of farmer. Um, so a lot of the technology these people are they're feeding down farmers' throats like you got to have this if you want right. to raise this and you got to do this and. Robert actually humbles me in that. He goes, shit, I still have this old planter. It does just as good as your stuff. And it does. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's I read it's a, crazy. I read a book last spring or the spring before about, it's about the end of the um, end of times. Not, not end of times, but we had M -A -P -M -M -E -P, what, what's called? M -P, uh, EMP. What's called? EMP. EMP. EMP hit, our, hit the country and it wiped out all the, all technology. And it was talking about that people were going back and, 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 and this book talks about Popular mechanics magazines, which I haven't even seen one in years. Yeah. But people were going to the hot to the colleges and looking through the old archives yeah. and getting all these uh, popular mechanics and all the technology and all the wisdom and stuff that are in those magazines. The kids today don't know how to do any of that stuff. Right. But all the stuff that they had to start figuring out how to do for themselves again. It was just a book, but it was interesting right. about things that we forget about mm -hmm. that was just modern. Right. Well, just know. a couple examples. So one with this new pickup, I have realized with all the electronics in that motherfucker. Could you? I have two pickups on my farm that are 97, 1997 models. And those are newer the, modern pickups, too. Yeah, and they still run and everything. Can you imagine, like, the pickup I have now in 20 years if that was still out and about? Nothing would work. Everybody could oh, fix it. In 1975, everybody could fix a pickup. Right. Everybody could mm -hmm. fix it. Every shade tree mechanic could make right. one run and stuff. You can't do that today. You can't do stuff in the 97s because the chips in them even. So my tractors it. are a little older. I went tried to have the John Deere shop fix it. They're like, well, we don't know how to work on this tractor. <laughs> Are you serious? I can't plug a computer into it. And so I'm that's like, all that they're doing. And now. I'm they, like, they what? They all rely on the computers to fix everything. Plug a computer into it, tell them what's and wrong. Tell, and it'll tell you what's wrong. Fuck yeah. Put air in the back well, tire. Well, I can tell you exactly. <laughs> <It will. laughs> I can tell you exactly what's wrong with the one. And you fucking turn the AC on, she starts smoking on the panel board behind you. Small potatoes. <laughs> Just don't, don't turn the that Well, I, that's what we had. Work on cold room. days. <laughs> poor kid Sean that worked with us. God, high school kid during COVID. He's like, hell yeah, I'm making money. <laughs> that reminds me, t Andy, telling everybody on the podcast, "Oh, Blake should love. He won't be here till the first. Let it be known, it is December second. I am fucking here. What was your and first love day of work? Had nothing to do with it. What was your first day at work? December first. Andy was right then. No. No, I said January. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, you told me I called. I got nervous. I was like, <coughs> he's, like, I'm going to call Blake. It had nothing to do with love. It's fucking, I'm doing shit. He so, said, I'll be lucky to see him by January. For are you going to be able to guide next year, too? Fuck yeah. And the next year? Mm hmm. When you get married? Yep. All right. Those are big Before gifts. I did, started dating him, I said, listen, I go to Texas. It's my family. I fucking enjoy it, and I'm going to do it until. So you I put a ring stop. on that finger. Fuck that. It, it changes Emily a lot of won't people. make me stop. 
I can't wait to meet this Emily. I've talked to her on Facebook you, or FaceTime. FaceTime. Blake FaceTimed me from her, and I got to talk to her when I did. Yep. I look forward to her being on here and telling the real truth. We got a lot of stories we got to tell her to make sure that, that you're woman. the guy. It's going to ruin my reputation. <laughs> <laughs> of what, having a little penis? We already know, boy. Ah, yeah. sweet. <laughs> she makes good dinner. Treats Blake really well. Yep. Gives him more shit than anybody I know. So I'll tell the first date story here. So it was during COVID, and there was just a local bar that was open. So I'm like... She claims it's not a way of, she didn't know it was a date until her friend told her it was a date. I messaged her. I was like, hey, you want to get to go get something to eat or something? Tornados. <laughs> that sounds like a date. Like that's a, what I that's said. That's a chicken shit way of so asking. So all the, all the guys I talked to, like, yeah, that's a way to date or ask. And she's like, no, it don't fucking count. But anyway, we go to the bar. I end up getting pretty drunk. Both of you. I don't mean to incriminate myself. Both of you. <laughs> yes. Okay. But we're back road cruising back home, and I stop to get a piss and take a piss, and she goes... Don't you know that's a felony? I'm like, yeah, drinking and driving. I'm sorry. And she goes, no, grown man holding little boy's pecker. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at her like, bitch, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to come hold it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. And then that's when you knew that you were in trouble. Oh, yeah. You were the, spitting. The, yeah, because like a couple weeks before that, she just kept giving me shit at this one house we were drinking at. And I was like. God damn. She hates my gut. She hates me. <laughs> I'm going to stick my wiener in her. <laughs> <laughs> have uh, you get along with her? Mama haven't yet. So. Have Mama. You, <laughs> have you met with her parents yet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving uh, yeah, her yeah. parents are cool. Did they have, have, do they know about the Blake on the podcast, Blake? Uh, no. Okay. And hopefully they do not. <laughs> her her brother might cool. because he goes to school with one of the kids I, that farms out by me. But it's fine. Well, don't don't she work with um, Thomas's best buddy or something? Yeah. So a kid that works here, she works with his best friend. Mm -hmm. and got eyes on you right now. Yeah, they do. No strippers for me. Just Not this year anymore. Huh? <laughs> anymore. Not At least on video. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't cut loose till we go to Oklahoma by yourself. <laughs> That's huh? right. What does she think about your card playing? Out here. Thanks, dickhead. <laughs> I guess she's not she very knows, fond she of it. She knows that I love gambling. She well, you're a it. farmer. Fuck. What do you expect? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the whole life, my whole life's a gamble. <laughs> she goes, you gamble all year and you just want to go gamble? Fuck yeah, I do. Yes. yes Who's the do. best card player here, you think? Excluding you? I'm not the best card player. I'd say Stoner's pretty good. You say Stoner? It's not Thomas. <laughs> no, he's not very good. <laughs> Poor little fucker. Last night, I he gave lost. you back his money he lost today for because I felt yeah, bad because he yeah. didn't understand the Why? game. Why? No. I still don't fucking understand that. Where's my Listen, fucking money? I didn't understand the game last night, and I'm not getting my fucking money back. Jeez. Yeah, but Jeff, in a total dick mood, gave it back to him just so he could win it back. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> like, what a dick oh, <laughs> He knew had, he was going to win I it had, back, so he just like, I had it back in two hands. <laughs> Let's get this kid back in the game. Maybe it'll boost his confidence. Said, but you're right. He, the, you, you do it for one person, you got to do it for everyone. Yeah, so I think next everybody time I lose get money. money back. That's we'll get, right. Stoner, yeah. can we have our money back from last night? Because you won the last no, game. That shit already spent at Walmart this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but that kid, I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you back your $30 you lost if you'll play again. Okay. Well, he, he gave back his 30 plus another 30 That's so, how it was. So, uh, took a bow. So, a so, you, dick. so he doubled or nothing his loss. Yes. Basically, yeah. Otherwise, we'd yeah. never got that other 30 out of him. I hustled him. Uh, <laughs> he didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> Hold his hustler trick in the book. He, he I'll has, give you your 30 back because you know they're going to buy him for more. Right. Well, if he's giving me 30, I can afford to I put another 30. I can put another 30. Yeah, that's or 20 fine. Yeah. That, that's the, good. The funny, I'm, getting, I'm on house money I'm at this point. Money. The yeah. funny part was he was locked that last game. Yeah. And I said, he goes, it's $5 to switch, $5 to chips. So fuck no, I want my $5. <laughs> Yeah, I'm leaving. He did. I know. I'm for cash now. Fuck this. I did. I thought we were playing the 30 last night. That was I, a bad move. I had you would have won if it was 27. It, if it, no, I thought it was 30. He thought it was 30. Oh, that's right. I, thought it was th I had 29 and a half. I thought it was 30 for whatever reason. Yeah. He's fucking. I was like, whoa, whoa, wait. He's inside. He's outside. Yeah. We've, played, his wallet. we've played 333 for two years now, and he still thinks it's fucking 30. I don't know where I got it from. I don't. <sighs> well, we played 1030. So yeah, you're probably so. thinking of 1030. I don't know. I mean, I, I thought it was 3.30. That's why periodically throughout the game, I'm constantly asking <laughs> what we're playing to. <laughs> you had to pull the old Logan out and get the old phone calculator out. Yeah. Well, goddamn, Jeff, give me a sec. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck 
fucking counting over here. Fucking counting over here. You got 19 and a half showing and probably a three down below. (laughs) (laughs) How do you know? I don't know know how you do that so fast. But it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's good to be back gambling my money. Well, <laughs> Thomas, though, that was so funny. That first oh, game. Was, oh, he, I'll buy in for twenty. Yeah, four dollars, four dollars, four dollars and four dollars <laughs> and. He's like, God dang. <laughs> he asked me. He asked me today when they got back from the hunt. He's like, How much money did you end up winning yesterday? I was like, Ah, between lunch and last night after dinner. I said, I'll buy two hundred fifty bucks. He was like, Bullshit! No, you didn't. You didn't win that much. I said, fuck, I've lost 700 in there before. What are you talking about? <laughs> no Blake's shit. won 1,000. Those fucking pots get pretty big. Dollar hands get you pretty gotta, fucking big. It's naughty. All I do is give extra money to everybody all year long. While when, I'm when it's... Uh, yeah, but you're not too keen on... You always take our money. You don't care. Huh? When? <laughs> I've never gotten my money back. Exactly. Yeah. He doesn't like us. He likes Thomas. Thomas didn't know he was innocent. Y'all ain't innocent if y'all are sympathetic. No, you sit down at the fucking table to play. You're not innocent. That's right. I didn't give y'all's money back. I gave my money back, so it didn't hurt y'all any. <clears throat> but still, it's a precedent. You do it for one, you got to do it for all. That's right. Took it out of the bank. Give it back to him. We're all about equality. Here I didn't give the honker. bank. I took it out of my pocket. 2020. Mm-hmm. Black power. Yep. Right on. BLM. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I, I'm glad are everybody's you cutting back. Us off? Yeah, it's time yeah. to get out of here. We got shit to do. What it's time almost, is it? It's almost three o'clock. Yep, we gotta, <sighs> we're gonna go scout pretty early today. Got scouting to do. You're not. You're crane hunting in the morning. I'll scout from here. <laughs> and just to let everybody know, who is the best crane hunter so far, 2020, 2021 season? Miguel. Who? Miguel. Miguel didn't know his ass from his elbow that day. <laughs> Fine, Andy, you did a good job hunting cranes, but I'll show you up tomorrow. So Are you going to call tomorrow? Because I'm giving you your call yes. back from Pacific. I'm going to call. Pacific sent you a, a brand new yep. steak. What do they call it again? Sand Hill Steakhouse. Steakhouse. Sand Hill Steakhouse. Mm-hmm. Sounds great. You're going to use it tomorrow. Because mm-hmm, it's mine. They sent it to me, not you. And you used it. I understand. Without asking. But you're going to use it tomorrow. Yeah. You're, you're, you're telling all these people worldwide that you don't need a call to crane hunt. Right. But you're going to use your call tomorrow. We'll yes. see. <laughs> Those fuckers came Stay in. Stay tuned. They came in beautifully. If I said the decoy's right, I won't need calls. I don't know. It's a north wind. They're going to be coming over your back. Oh, no. It's a something, north wind? So, something you're going to have to think about. It's Ollie. Something you're going to have to think about. Oh, the day I, I hunted it, it was... No, I you. think it's Lou. The day I hunted it, it was the south wind. And they came from the right. north and they just... Now that it's going to be a north wind tomorrow, you're going to have a little bit of... Mm. you got to purr at them a little bit. <sighs> Juvie whistle. All right. When they do it, though, when they did it the other the, the other day, oh, dirty. Classic meat fest. I told Thomas. I love meat fest. He said, he said, do you think I'll get some good footage? I said, if they do it, you'll get the really best footage. The best footage. If they don't, it'll be a long fucking morning. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing I couldn't get across to Mikey. He's like, how do you not love this? How do you not love this? I'm like, go on a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no have shit. a bad one. Because you have no control at that point. None. Geese, you can adjust shit. Yep. Cranes, no. I tried sh- adjusting this morning. It didn't work, Stoner. So. <laughs> well. But, right. but it, 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 he was just like, I just can't believe you don't like it. Like, this is your first one. He's like no me on my deer hunt. <laughs> yeah, well, this is your first you one. <laughs> you just of fucking you had to beat that. We're beating the cheeks off of try, him. Try hunting for two and a half weeks straight and then having the neighbor shoot 180 <laughs> some inch deer when you get to Texas. Yeah. Is that what happened to you? Yes. You mm-hmm. shot it? Yeah. Ooh. On his property. Did you? Uh, but have, how many years have you been seeing this deer? This first year on this farm. Did you just come out of nowhere? Mm-hmm. I mean, I saw him all See summer. yearling? Oh. 180 inch yearling. Damn good yearling. All right, we got to get off here. Fine. Thank y'all. God bless y'all. Appreciate Blake, y'all being fuck on you, here. Dan. Oh, Dan will be here next week, too. I know. He messed with me. You can be around. He's going to come out there I'm not hunting with him. tug on your dick. I'm not hunting with him. Why is that? Because I don't like him. You don't even know him. Well, that's the problem. I have a feeling y'all are going to be buddies. Ah, oh, man. I would. You remember that barrier we talked about about friends and guys? That is true. Yep. Who okay. Else? Who else comes in? Logan and Rev come in next week. They'll be here on Sunday night. We'll have the guys from oh, Looking Glass will be here. We well, need to do that early in the day. I like that. I, I need the day. I need the next day off somehow. He told I, me I need he, to not be on the clock. He's bringing a bottle of Pappy. Pappy. Oh God! Thousand dollar bottle of bourbon. We we'll have a shot of that. Have a little nip, a little snort. 
did I tell you my newfound summer fun thing? Line whoa, of, whoa, whoa, line whoa. of Google. Hold on. Going to my buddy's, or my, my uh, he is my buddy. It's my banker's shop. He has a fake tiki hut inside of it. Mm-hmm. And we drink scotch and smoke cigars for like five hours. <laughs> Did you have what Milky kind of, Ways? What kind of scotch? I uh, can't remember. It was that good, huh? It was good. Really? Mom sells it. All right, I'm getting the look. We got to go. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. Blake, I'm glad that you're back. Thanks. I'm glad Star, you're here. I'm glad that you're here. Everybody's healthy. We're here. Going to have a great year. Okay, right. bye-bye. Bye, See everybody. You. Did you have a new deal from the guy from the Cow Bandits? All right, go check out all of our great sponsors. Let me get the sheet over here. Foul Bandits. They got a promo code, and they're going to be having a sale for Christmas. Stanfield Hunting Outfitters, Gun Dog Outdoors, Dirty Duck Coffee, Dive Bomb Industries, Boss Shot Shells, Pacific Calls, Lucky Duck, Looking Glass Duck Club, William & Chris Wines, 14 Cattle Company, Blind Grass Camouflage, and J2 Outdoors. See ya.